So I just broke off a case and I had a little bit of time. And what I've been trying to do is um, get articles that I've written um, onto YouTube. And uh, this was an article I wrote about a year and a half ago. And um, it's one of the few articles that uh, was picked up by CNN, the online section of CNN, and a few other uh, online blogs. Um, but the title of the article is Five Victims Now Say Maine State Police Violated Rights. And uh, I'm going to read the one that I posted on LinkedIn. This is it here. That's a picture of Lieutenant Scott Ireland. So um, I'm just going to read it so we stay on point. There are now five victims that I'm aware of who have been wronged by the Maine State Police. Lieutenant Scott Ireland, Detective David Pelletier, Sergeant uh, Johnston, and Sergeant Zabrowski. Those are the Maine State Police officers that uh, violated rights of people. I'm starting to understand why so many people have come forward. When I posted an article on LinkedIn recently about how the Maine State Police troopers under the command of Lieutenant Scott Ireland violated my rights, and retaliated against me, I had no idea that it would lead to what I am about to write. I did not want any of this to happen to me. I was happy running my PI practice and keeping to myself. I believe in good old fashioned hard work and self-reliance, a virtue passed down to me through generations of my ancestors. However, I am troubled by, by what I have learned since posting my first LinkedIn article about the case. The pieces started falling into place when Bobby Doyon, a licensed PI in Maine, sent me a message saying the same troopers violated his rights. Then a second person came forward and told me how the same troopers made the application process so arduous they finally gave up trying. As I learned more about their stories and started connecting dots, a third and a fourth person messaged me with similar stories about the weapons and licensing division of the Maine State Police. The names of the troopers remained consistent while the stories would vary. However, a theme was beginning to, to develop. If you were from out of state or a sole proprietor investigator, you may have a target. You may be the target of the weapons and licensing division run by Lieutenant Scott Ireland. This was troubling, however, seemed consistent with an article I had read about Lieutenant Ireland, about how Lieutenant Ireland was involved in making it harder for out-of-state citizens to get concealed carry permits in Maine. I wish that my article ended here, but unfortunately, I have learned much more troubling information. A kingpin investigator entered the picture. His name, Michael Harrington, and he is the owner of Merrill's Investigation the largest PI company in Maine. I mentioned him in my article about Bobby Doyon's case, however, did not know how uh, that much about him. Mr. Harrington also had a great deal of input and interest in the recent changes to the Maine private investigator laws. I have a source that Michael Harrington had the new laws drafted by one of his own attorneys before it went to the legislature. So far, I have only one source on this, however, Maybe somebody should look into that. Mr. Harrington is the former president of the Maine Licensed Private Investigator Association. I suspected this organization wanted to crack down on out-of-state investigators. However, I did not know that it was Mr. Har it was under Mr. Harrington's leadership that was behind most of um, of that activity. The fact that the Maine Licensed Private Investigator Association under the leadership of Mr. Harrington wanted to change the laws to make it more difficult for out-of-state investigators and non-member investigators is understandable. Business is cutthroat, and if you see an opportunity to slow down, weaken, or even eliminate the competition, then why not do it? As a Christian, I don't operate my business that way. However, I have seen many successful businesses do that. The pieces continued to fall into place when I learned that prior to Michael Harrington's involvement with the Maine Licensed Private Investigator Association, there were only 40 to 50 members. When Mr. Harrington joined, he brought with him all of his subcontractors and paid for their memberships in most cases. This swelled the numbers to over 100 members. When it came time to elect new leadership, Mr. Harrington became president. When more than half of the members are on your payroll, it's pretty easy to see why he became president. 
One member told me that it was under, understood that you either voted for Mike or you did not have any work come Monday morning. Mr. Harrington manipulated his supporters to become elected president of the Maine Licensed Private Investigator Association. He then used his new position to get the new PI laws in front of the legislature and continue to use his influence to see his ideas become law. Once the new laws went into effect, Michael Harrington left the Maine Licensed Private Investigators Association and started a new, new association on his own. As I pieced this information together, I came to the realization that I was wrong about the Maine Licensed Private Investigator Association. They were not the ones pressuring the Maine State Police to crack down on out-of-state PIs. It was Michael Harrington that was trying to use his influence to make the state police and legislature eliminate his competition. As I continued learning new information, I began to further understand why Lieutenant Ireland and Detective Pelletier would not issue a PI license to me and take away my biggest client. It seemed more and more possible that they were unduly influenced by Michael Harrington. My evidence on this is developing, however, maybe somebody should look into that. It should be noted that Michael Harrington was recently voted to be the chairman of an oversight board that regulates and oversees the PI field in Maine. He was nominated by Lieutenant Scott Ireland. What? That's right. He's regulating and overseeing himself. How is that even legal? Some other members of this association board are Detective David Pelletier, Sergeant Michael Zabrowski, and another member is Brian McMaster, who I will tell you a little bit more about later. When I wrote in my first article that I suspected the PI Association was influencing the state police, I had no clue Michael Harrington was the single largest force behind the recent changes in the new PI law and was on an oversight board with the very troopers I suspected of being influenced. Not just on the board, but he was the chairman of the board. This raised some interesting questions in my mind. It occurred to me that I was in a unique position to test a theory. One of the questions I had was, is Mr. Harrington unduly influencing Lieutenant Ireland to put people out of business and then sweep in to take their clients? The reason that I was in a position to test this was because I was subcontracting out work in Maine before Detective Pelletier charged me with a crime. When he told me it was illegal to profit off a case in Maine, even if the case is subcontracted to a licensed Maine investigator, I told all my clients that I was going to no longer accept work in Maine. This was Detective Pelletier's first strike against my business. I knew he was wrong, but I didn't want to make my situation any worse. In order to test my theory, I spent several hours talking to clients on the phone and sending emails to past clients that handled cases in Maine. My unscientific survey question to them was very simple. Who are you currently using in Maine for your PI needs? Some did not want to say. Many emails received no response. However, from the people who did respond, Mr. Harrington's company was mentioned often. This meant that my theory may be correct. Mr. Harrington is using Lieutenant Ireland to put people out of business and then sweep in to take their clients. I want to be clear that it's possible Lieutenant Ireland is being manipulated by Mr. Harrington. Maybe I'm the only victim of this, but maybe somebody should look into that. If what I have stumbled onto turns out to be true, I don't even know what to say. Let's hope it's not true. But again, maybe somebody should look into that. I want to be clear. I have nothing against Mr. Harrington. He is playing a cutthroat game in a very competitive industry. However, the state police are supposed to be referees that keep the game of business fair. And if Lieutenant Ireland is unduly influenced by big business in Maine, well, you know how Shawshank Redemption ended. They come to arrest the warden. The same person that told one citizen, you've lost your privilege to call the governor's office. And wrote to me, I know your case was dismissed on a technicality. 
is the same person who is potentially playing favorites as the commander of the licensing division of the Maine State Police. His name is Lieutenant Scott W. Ireland. Before I posted an article about my case and uploaded the video to YouTube, I sent a complaint to Maine Attorney General Janet Mills. After several weeks went by, I received a response from Brian McMaster with the AG's office. His initial response was confusing, as he only advised me that my complaint had been forwarded to my attorney. It was not until I posted the article that advised um, that I had posted the article online that he advised that he would not be opening an investigation into Lieutenant Ireland, Detective Pelletier, or Sergeant Johnston. It became crystal clear why when I learned that Mr. McMaster was on the same oversight board that Lieutenant Ireland, Detective Pelletier, um, and Sergeant Zabrowski were on. I learned that Mr. McMaster is practically neighbors with Michael Harrington the same Mr. Harrington that was behind the recent changes in the PI law. That is, uh, and that is putting pressure on Lieutenant Ireland to get out of state investigators and the same um, Michael Harrington that was recently voted to be chairman of an oversight board. The fact that Mr. McMaster was assigned to my complaint about Lieutenant Ireland, Detective Pelletier, and Sergeant Johnston raises serious ethical questions. He is clearly friends and colleagues with the very troopers I am complaining about. How does that even happen? Perhaps somebody should look into that. As a new victim came forward, I made Internal Affairs Trooper Lieutenant Anna Love aware. However. She was clear the victims need to contact her directly. I tried to get them to call her. However, they were skeptical that Lieutenant Love would do anything. Because of this, I thought of a way to ease their resistance. I sent Lieutenant Love an email asking her to tell me how many troopers she has referred to the AG for prosecution. I felt this information would give her credibility and that I could use it to get the other victims to give her a call. I was confused when she would not answer the question and then referred the question to state police lawyer Christopher Parr. However, I asked him the same question, and after six days, he initially agreed to answer, however, then replied by telling me that they do not keep track of that information. Since Lieutenant Love would obviously know how many inter internal affairs investigations she has been involved with that led to criminal charges by the Attorney General, I am beginning to wonder if the other victims have a valid reason to be skeptical. I am still holding out hope that Lieutenant Anna Love will do the right thing. Her phone number is area code 207-624-7291 if you want to call her and ask her. Um, when I wrote this article, um, the internal affairs investigation was still ongoing. Um, it's since come to an end, um, but still, give her a call. The, the more I learn about this case, the more questions I have. Here are a few. Why did the Attorney General assign my complaint to Brian McMaster, who's friends with the very troopers I'm complaining about? Why did Lieutenant Love not want to tell me how many troopers she has investigated that led to criminal charges? How can Michael Harrington, owner of the largest PI firm in Maine, become chairman of an oversight board that regulates PIs in Maine? What is Lieutenant Ireland's motivation for putting Mr. Harrington's competition out of business? What is Detective Pelletier, Sergeant Johnston, and Sergeant Zabarski's motivation to go along with Lieutenant Ireland? What pieces have I not connected yet? Do troopers above Lieutenant Ireland know what's going on? How many other victims are there? How do I get justice when it appears the Attorney General and the Internal Affairs Department are protecting Lieutenant Ireland, Detective Pelletier, and the sergeants. Are other divisions within the state police just as corrupt as this division? How far down this rabbit hole do I really want to go? If you have answers, or I am wrong with any of the information in this article, please write to me at my email address, which is uh, Josh Gray. J-O-S-H-G-R-A-Y at nationalsi.com 
I will post corrections to this article, this YouTube video, and any other articles that you've watched or read on my Facebook page and my Twitter feed. Please also write if you have additional information about this story, any other stories involving the Maine State Police, specifically uh, Lieutenant Ireland's department, or if you've been wronged by any police department, write it in the comment section of this video, my articles on my uh, page, because I think it's very interesting to know what's going on in our country, and the only way it can stop is if good citizens like you make it public. Um, also, check out my uh, other videos. Um, I've uh, posted quite a few videos now about this story, starting with um, uh, my story, a very detailed account of my story called Main State Police Violate My Civil, Constitutional, and Human Rights. Um, the second victim that came forward, Bob Doyon, I posted a video, video about his story. It's called uh, Second Victim Accused Main State Police of Violating Rights. Um, a third victim I, that I made public, um, her story is called She Said, She Said, um, a victim story. That's a YouTube video I made. I also wrote articles about this. A fourth victim came forward. Um, uh, I forget the name of the video, but it's basically a story about how um, Lieutenant Scott Ireland threatened a man, one of his victims, not to make contact with, gover with the governor of the state of Maine. Um, so, and I've also talked in this article as well as other articles about the uh, the other people that have come forward to me but have specifically requested that I not make their story public. Um, this this is a huge story and I don't understand why more news articles aren't news agencies like mainstream news are not picking this up. So the only way to spread this and make it go viral is for you to like, share, and comment on this video. Um, and if you know a reporter or you know or you are a reporter please bring this story out. What's going on in Maine is a travesty in justice, and it needs to end. Scott Ireland is a corrupt and evil person who leads a gang of thugs at the Maine State Police. Detective Pelletier, um, Sergeant Johnston, Sergeant Zabrowski, they are all corrupt and evil people who are destroying lives in my instance, they took away a client that was giving me over $200,000 a year in annual revenue. In Bob Doyon's case, they interrupted his revenue stream and destroyed his uh, business all because of a false charge. In, uh, in uh, the third victim's case, uh, Miss uh, Bierman, they uh, intimidated her into not renewing her license and shut down her entire revenue stream so now she lives off government assistance. The main state police are destroying lives and I know other stories but the people don't want to come forward but hopefully with all this preponderance of evidence and all these people that are coming forward, some more of these people will come forward and they'll tell you about the millions and millions of dollars the state police are taking away from good, hard-working private investigators and other people and giving it to their friends and cronies and big business in Maine. It's absolutely disgusting, corruption, and it needs to end. I guess I'll end this video here.